Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer with Preventive Medicine, uh, Prevention of Heart Attack, Stroke, Cancer, uh, Disability. Today we're going to be talking about vitamin D. <clears throat> vitamin D has a couple of names and there's a couple of different uh, vitamins uh, in, the, in the group. Vitamin D3, colocalciferol, is the, uh, the most common and the one we'll talk about most. And vitamin D2 is ergocalciferol. One of the things to remember about vitamin D is that uh, it's actually a hormone. Uh, this is for all you biochemists out there. This is the um, the molecular structure. And as you, uh, those of you that do remember that, there's a significant uh, similarity with cholesterol. The uh, you know the uh, six carbon rings also known affectionately as the chicken wire uh, format. And sure enough, uh, vitamin D3 is formed by the skin uh, when the U ultraviolet light, I believe it's a UVB, uh, hits the skin. You can, uh, for, there's some debate and argument regarding how much and how quickly. I've heard uh, up to 10 minutes of sunshine between the hours of 10 and 2 will create um, a thousand to three thousand international units. I mean, that's getting close to a daily dose. Um, I've also heard that you'll get that much from a whole day. So, again, a little bit debate of debate about how effective and quick it is. Uh, this is a NERT, uh, for, again, for the biochemists in the, in the air. Uh, in the viewership. This is inert until it's hydroxylated by liver and kidney. I'm going to give you a warning. The next uh, picture is uh, disturbing, but it's, uh, it's a major par portion, thankfully, of the history of medicine, although this is still occurring uh, in some places. It's becoming more and more rare. This is rickets. You've heard of rickets, and most of us thought, just had a single synapse thought about Rickets, vitamin D, once you get uh, vitamin D into the population, you cure and prevent rickets. And then that's it. Uh, for the longest time, we thought that was the end of the story. What we did not realize is <clears throat> it's a far more complex picture. Um, rickets is just at the tip of the iceberg. Again, there are multiple functions um, and places where vitamin D... Uh, impacts our metabolism. As I mentioned, it's a really classified more as a hormone than a, uh, than a vitamin. One of the major uh, areas is a general type of anti-inflammatory uh, process. It's um, credited with decrease in cancer, um, <clears throat> mental health issues, cardiovascular disease, um, uh, some other er things as well. Now, again, prevention of cardiovascular disease and cancer is my uh, is my area, and I can tell you that um, information, that data, the science is get is pretty solid on that now. Uh, we so we do uh, watch for vitamin D. I'll show you the numbers in a few minutes. We we get a vitamin D test on our patients. Um, speaking of good science, so there's a a, um, a Dr. Aaron, oh, I'm blanking on her name, Mikos. Dr. Aaron Mikos is a cardiologist at Johns Hopkins. Um, pretty good, well-known uh, university in medicine. Well, <clears throat> many times ranked the best. And she had a lot to say about vitamin D. Again, you'll see, for example, if you read uh, Wikipedia on vitamin D, the Wikipedia site will say... Um, Cardiovascular prevention and several things are just not um, not not proven, not that well supported. That's not true. They are very well supported, and uh, Wikipedia needs to be updated. Uh, I mentioned a few minutes ago that we have different levels now. We used to, and again, in the outdated Wikipedia site, you'll see what ten to twenty-five as a level recommended level. You see here, um, 
We don't consider a significant excess up until about 80. In fact, we look to have it in the uh, 40 to 60 range. And if patients are low down in the 20s, we'll recommend that they increase their vitamin D. First of all, ask if they're taking it. Then um, usually we'll hear somebody say, well, uh, yeah, I'm taking 1,000 a, a milligrams. We'll bump that up to four to 6,000 per day. Now, can you get hypervitaminosis D or vitamin D toxicity? That's certainly the perception out there. The reality is the reports are pretty, uh, pretty unusual. Uh, the reports when they're there do indicate uh, liver and uh, especially kidney toxicity. There's debate about toxicity. Um, when it has occurred, it's been more in uh, levels of 25 to 50,000 units per day. Um, even Dr. Oz has a, a pretty good uh, perspective on that. His, his perspective was, look, that's over 50 times the uh, recommended amount. You take over 50 times the recommended amount of water and it won't, uh, it won't take you months to, to have damage like it will with vitamin D. So, um, <clears throat> yes, it does occur, but it's relatively safe. Uh, supplement. Now, <clears throat> who has, why am I showing a picture of obesity? It's what does obesity got to do with vitamin D? Well, I'm getting ready to talk about populations that have risk for low vitamin D. And why would obesity have a risk for low vitamin D? It's fat soluble. It's a fat soluble vitamin, so therefore People with increased fat have more vitamin D, but it's spread into areas where you can't reach it. How about uh, uh, women of color? Well, actually, women of color represent several different risk factors for low vitamin D. Number one, as uh, Dr. Mochis at Hopkins mentioned, uh, women tend to have a higher percentage body fat. So that's one reason for lower vitamin D. They tend to uh, more often have indoor jobs and indoor work. Another reason, they tend to uh, be smarter about wearing protection when they're in the sun. Yet another reason. So several reasons why, uh, oh, and the one I left out, higher melatonin in the skin. Melatonin uh, decreases the UVB uh, penetration, so therefore, and, and up to 10 times. So therefore it takes longer, uh, the darker you are, to get. Uh, the appropriate buildup of vitamin D from sunlight. As we have mentioned, and you might guess, uh, indoor workers. So the outdoor workers are continuing to get their dose of vitamin D, whereas indoor workers, during the work week, vitamin D levels just plummet. And then on the weekends, when they're able to get outside a little bit more, you see improvement. And guess who almost always has problems with health-related health stuff? Us old people. Our uh, hormones are slowing down. Different uh, components of our metabolism are slowing down. And yes, we, we get both decreased absorption of uh, vitamin D, and dietary vitamin D, and we get decreased uh, production. You get vitamin D, by the way, from uh, a few skins, not a lot. I mean, a few uh, foods, not a lot. One of them being cod liver oil. Um, <clears throat> what's this map of the U.S. got to do? In the dark part of that U.S. map is a much higher risk for low vitamin D, and the lighter part below that line, a much lower risk for low vitamin D. Again, all things to be thinking about uh, when you're thinking about vitamin D. Now, <clears throat> there's been, oh, there has been a lot of attention paid to a, a vitamin related to this function. Sort of the yin and yang, sort of the teeter-totter effect. Um, vitamin D, uh, I think I mentioned that it in, increases the absorption of calcium by the by this, the gut by about a factor of 20. 
So, <clears throat> why has vitamin D not been a major cure-all? Well, there's a lot of focus now on a new uh, thing called vitamin K2. And actually, there is some some focus and some thought that vitamin K2 actually decreases cardiovascular disease. What has that got to do with vitamin D? Vitamin K2 is supposed to uh, help. It, it's like the dump trucks. The vitamin D brings the calcium in and vitamin K2 carries the calcium to the correct place. Um, the perception is that uh, vitamin K2 uh, prevents deposition of calcium in arteries, therefore decreasing the um, the rigidity of the artery. So here we're saying we've got low vitamin K2 uh, and we've got calcification of the artery wall leading to forming a, a rigid pipe. You have lower vitamin K2 here and therefore much more flexibility of the arterial wall. Has that been researched? Yes, it's, uh, I don't think it's quite there yet. I don't think it's totally and conclusively proven. Uh, but I, I do think I am going to get some vitamin K2.